So here is the overview of the male reproductive system. There are some parts that are missing prior to slaughtering the animal and being bought to the market. But still, the present here are the testes with a small cut-off part of spermatic cord and the penis. The diagram provided will be used as a guide for the other missing parts such as the ductus deferens and the accessory glands. So the paired testes of a bull are oval in shape and they are responsible for the reproduction of spermatozoa and testosterone. Upon incision, the testes are composed of testicular parenchyma and a mediastinum. The parenchyma consists of the interstitial Leydig cells that produce the testosterone, seminiferous tubules, the site of spermatogenesis, the lymphatic, and the blood vessels. A cutaneous sac here protects and supports the testes and also for the temperature regulation since the scrotal skin is heavily populated with silk glands. The appendage on one side of the testes along its long axis is called the epididymis and divided into the head, body, and the tail. The epididymis houses the spermatozoa as they mature before they are expelled by ejaculation. The structure that lies parallel to the body of epididymis is the ductus deferens. Another important structure is the spermatic cord and it is highly developed in bulls, but as you can see here, it was cut off. The function of spermatic cord is to suspend each individual testis within the scrotum. Their primary muscle supporting the testis and coursing the spermatic cord is the cremaster muscle. We have here the figure, which I've said earlier, to be used in explaining the missing salient parts. The tubular structure coursing from the testis towards the accessory gland is the ductus deferens, which propels the spermatozoa from the epididymis to the urethra through peristaltic contractions during ejaculation. Next are the accessory glands present in both reproductive system. This include the ampulla of the ductus deferens, the vesicular glands, the prostate gland, and the bulbourethral gland. This gland's accessory produces the bulk of the ejaculate, or semen, which is the medium for transport of sperm. The ampulla that are associated with the terminal parts of the ductus deferens contribute to the volume of semen. The paired vesicular glands, formerly known as seminal vesicles, are lobulated glands that contribute to the large proportion to the ejaculate volume. Next is the unpaired prostate gland that produces an alkaline secretion that gives semen its characteristic odor. And lastly is the bulbourethral gland, also known as Cowper's gland, and this would produce the gel fraction of the ejaculate. Going back to our specimen right here, the male organ of copulation, the penis, may be divided into three general areas, the glands or the free extremity, the main portion or the body, and the two crura or roots that attach to the ischial arch of the pelvis. As you can see here, there is an S-shaped configuration along the shaft of the penis and supported by the retractor penis muscle. The sigmoid flexure allows the penis to be retracted inside the body until the reaction occurs. The prepice on the other hand is an evaginated fold of skin surrounding the free extremity of the penis.